Now, Pete's going to tell us, what is calibration? Well, calibration is, is a measurement of a particular device against a reference. Now, that reference is um, normally traceable to a primary standard or to a national measurements laboratory. And in doing that, we, we, that's, that's a calibration. Right. Right. What we do is a calibration with a verification. So the, ver the calibration is a measurement of, of something to a traceable standard. Right. The verification is that same measurement. So you're doing a measurement of a device under test to a traceable standard to a set of specifications. Uh -huh. so that's a verification. That's the difference. That's the difference. So you know, it, and nowhere did you mention adjustment. Then. No, no, we don't. Uh, it's uh, now that may or may not be part of the, the procedure. Uh, sometimes you get devices that can't be adjusted. Yes. And these devices have cow factors, like a, like um, an older power sensor, for example, doesn't have um, an adjustment on it. It has a set of cow factors that you, that you program into the meter. Got it. So. We don't always adjust things. In fact, it's better off if you're running a quality system if you don't have to adjust something. You at shouldn't. The time, adjust you shouldn't, it. because over time you're able to determine its its drift. Its drift and stability. And if you constantly yes. adjust that reference every time you get it in for calibration, if you constantly adjust it, you don't you're not you not able to determine what its long-term drift is. Or if you do adjust it, you should have performed a full verification first so that you know how Before much it's drifted results. and then... We do, we, as part of our verification yeah. performance, if, if uh, a box comes in um, and fails verification mm -hmm. and is adjusted, it, we will get, we'll provide the before results and the after results. So we, where it's failed, that way our customer can go wherever possible, that way our customer can go back in time and look what the impact is on his measurements that he's done. Got it. All right. The other, the other uh, type of certificate you may get is um, a certificate of conformance. Right. Um, which is... Uh, that typically comes shipped with a lot of products. They yes. will only, they yeah. won't give you a calibration no, certificate, no, it's, they'll it's give you a certificate, certificate of conformance. conformance. What and does that mean? Well, it means at the time of manufacture it passed. Right. All right, so it might, it might have been sitting on the shelf for a while. Um, Whichever manufacturer it but is. But it was calibrated it was in quote marks at, at the, the time. So manufacturer's factory. And Industry-wise, it's prob probably um, not broadly accepted as, as, as a reference. Companies I've worked at, it's not worth the paper it's written That's on. pretty much it. So many of our customers now, when they buy a new box, they buy a, an upfront cal. Yep. And we encourage them to keep that cal cycle going. It's, um, the problem with a certificate of conformance is if you, buy a, if you buy a product that comes with a certificate of conformance and you accept it, and it comes from a manufacturer that will give you a three-year cal cycle on it and a three-year warranty, you're never actually going to test it until you get to the end of your warranty period. Yep. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying that, that, that that's, that's You've that's got no there. data. You've got no data on this. So yep. you know, your confidence level, and we don't sell certainties. All right? Um, we sell a confidence level. Most of, most of our devices uh, and tests are done at a 95% confidence level. Statistically, that's two sigma, right? Um, we can do it to, to uh, for specialised um, requirements for customers. And some customers three sigmas, would actually require occasionally uh, to 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 get uh, a better uncertainty level. Yep. Um, that just means we broaden our uncertainties in many cases uh, to give them a ninety nine percent confidence level um, at th at three sigma. The uh, confidence level being the okay a ninety at a at a ninety five percent confidence level, there's a 95% chance that the results that you've been given are valid. Are at true. which point? At the, at, at, at the at day the, it was calibrated? At the, at the day it was calibrated. Yep. All right. this, is why, this is why recalibration is important. If you're running a quality system where um, you're a supplier or a manufacturer um, and you're doing product here and you're doing product there, even if you get rid of your reference standard at the end of that time, all right, and say, yep, I'm not going to calibrate this reference standard anymore, I'm going to throw it away. When you retire it, you still have to get it calibrated yes. because you're, you've got to cover that period of time. Otherwise, you've lost all that data. You've lost, well, you haven't lost all that well, data, but if you... You it, don't have a reference you point. You don't have a reference point. So yep. at start and finish, so it's only valid for two points in time. 
it's not actually a calibration isn't isn't valid. It doesn't give you a confidence level in the future until such time as you get another calibration done, Got it. and that gives you the calibration uh, confidence within two points in time. How do you? Some companies um, specify an initial shorter uh, period of calibration cycle, like six months or even three months, to get some historical data on that particular instrument. Is that a common? That that would be thing? the um, the customers. Call yep. um, ISO 17025, which is our industry standard for calibration, actually specifies that the customer has to determine the cal cycle. Right. Um, we, in our offer, in our terms and condi conditions, um, we, we, that the customer accepts as part of part of the purchase order. Uh, we make a statement in there that says we will calibrate it and install the manufacturer's recommended cal cycle as the due date, okay. unless the customer asks for something else. Got it. All right, so if a, if a product comes with a, a 24 month cal cycle, um, and as part of our t T's and C's, we will say we'll give it a 24 month cal cycle, unless the customer asks for something else. Some casters, customers are very tight on their, their quality systems, mm -hmm. will shorten their cal cycles. Yes. Other customers will lengthen their cal cycles. Mm -hmm. um, and that's entirely up to the customer. If you choose to extend your cal cycle, that's great. You take a 12-month cal cycle and your quality system is mature enough and you've got enough um, confidence that you can extend it to three years, mm -hmm. that's up to your quality manager to, to determine that. But you know, if you go right. from a 12-month cal cycle to a three-year cal cycle and you have a failure here at three years, uh -huh. instead of looking back 12 months, you've now got to look, look back, back three, three years. years. So, yeah. Got it. Now, Don't get something for nothing. Uh, take for example the Agilent 3000 scope. It originally, when it was released, it had a 12 recommended 12 month calibration cycle. Then 12 months later, Agilent went, we're confident in it. We're now going to recommend a two year calibration that's, cycle uh, that's, on this particular instrument. That's historically what's happened with a lot of instruments. Right. Um, the even the power meters, the power meters and power sensors, uh, the E series power meters, when they initially came out. Some of the power meters had a six-month cal cycle. Right. Now, the, um, for the E-series power meters, they now have a 24-month cal cycle. On, that's their recommended. Is that because you built up more confidence in yeah, the product um, over time? Yeah, because uh, as, as, a pro as a product's matured and everything else, it's been determined to be more stable. Yep. And we can, instead of recommending a six-month cal cycle on those meters, they're now a 24-month cal cycle. Right. right. So you as a manufacturer, your metrology department is keeping track of new products introduced and... That's part of the manufacturing division, yeah. Right. They, they, okay. they, do, they measure the stability over time of the, devo of, of the devices and yep. because it's in the customer's best interest. Uh, from, a, from a service perspective, it's in our best interest to recalibrate every, something every six months, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily what the customer wants. <laughs> and unfortunately, um, the, uh, the reality of the situation is we're here to provide a service for a customer. So can we dispel the myth that when you send out your multimeter for calibration, somebody with a grey beard strokes his grey beard and tweaks the trim no, pots inside? That's, that's dispelled. dispelled. Myth busted. Excellent. Myth, myth busted. Calibration is a science of measurement, not the tweaking of a beard. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. No worries.